my kitchen right. with my cooking apron on. And Janine and Megan and okay. I talked about it's it. Done. And we decided to do a recipe that might be good for Lent, which is the season before Easter, which six weeks before Easter. And it is a time that people who follow Jesus think about what Easter means to them and the sacrifice that Jesus made for us all, that huge sacrifice of his own life on the cross. And in the season of Lent, Maybe some of you have done this before. Maybe some of you are doing it now. Sometimes Christians will give something up that they like to do or like to eat. Um, just to, as a little um, symbol for Jesus of I acknowledge what you did for me. And I'm going to give this up just to show that I'm thinking about your sacrifice for me. In the past, I have given up sweets, so I didn't for six weeks eat any um, cookies or cakes or ice cream or anything like that. One year for Lynn, I gave up watching television, which um, is a pretty big deal for people who like to watch TV at night. So it was an adjustment and maybe fill that time with more reading of, of the Bible or praying and talking to God. I haven't given anything up this year. But um, another thing that some people give up during the season of Lent is meat. Um, just because if meat is something that you really like to eat and you give it up, that's showing Jesus, hey, you gave up your life for me. I'm going to give up eating meat for six weeks. It's not that big of a deal compared to what you did for me, but it's just helping me to remember what you did for me. So the recipe that I've chosen to prepare together with you tonight is called Easy Tuna Pasta Salad, and it calls for canned tuna fish. Now, some of you said you don't really like tuna, and that's okay. It's got hard-boiled eggs on the top of it. Here's a picture of what it's going to look like. And instead of tuna, if you want to just, um, I'll send the recipe to Janine. I sent the ingredients to her, but I'll send the how-to directions to her so she can email them out. You could substitute for the tuna, you could do um, chopped up chicken or some other protein or some lunch meat that you might like to eat. So just like um, salad, the salad that I made, you can put anything you want in it. The recipes for things like this are really just a suggestion, but I'm going to follow the recipe tonight. So are you ready to get started? All right. So what I've already done is earlier when I came home from work, I cooked a box of pasta that's a rotini shape. It's like corkscrews. So it is ready to go when we're ready to mix in the dressing and the toppings. So I'm just gonna let that rest over here while we first prepare the dressing. So I have a bowl here and the first ingredient on my list is a cup of mayonnaise. Take a look at this big jar of mayonnaise. My husband really likes mayonnaise, so he buys this big size. I'm gonna get a spoon out, and we are gonna measure one cup of mayonnaise, and this is gonna be for the dressing. So get a measuring cup if you're cooking along with me, and I'm just gonna spoon in this mayonnaise. It takes a lot because it's a, it's a whole box of pasta and a lot of tuna fish, so we need a lot of dressing. You see, yep, that's almost one cup, a little bit more. There we go. All right, now, if you'll pardon me, I'm gonna scoop this mayonnaise back in the refrigerator so it doesn't spoil, because we don't want anyone to get a sick tummy. Now, next on the, the um, list, it says to put three tablespoons of lemon juice. Let me go get my lemon. I'm gonna squeeze fresh lemon juice. I'm gonna get two just in case. Now, I always wash my fruits before I cut them. <laughs> even oranges before I peel them, just in case somebody who picked them didn't wash their hands. 
And I have a cool device here. You've probably seen this before. It's a juicer and the juice goes in here and this catches all the seeds. So we are not gonna have any lemon seeds in this pasta. It is gonna be delicious. Do you know the trick of rolling the lemons a little bit, pressing them, and it helps the juice to come out better? Fresh lemon juice is such a good ingredient. Many recipes. So I'm just gonna- I remember in Cameron's, when we had our lemonade for the summer, that we uh -huh. would fresh squeeze our lemons. Oh, isn't that so good, Madeline? So refreshing. It's the best. Lemon, I agree. Fresh lemon juice, lemonade. Just, I can't ask for anything better. So Madeline, maybe you're going to change your mind and want to make this recipe sometime and just use chicken instead. Maybe. Yeah, you could I do that. Didn't, I didn't know you could substitute stuff. Oh, always. Recipes are just suggestions as far as I'm concerned. Unless it's something that you're baking, you kind of have to follow the directions carefully when you bake things. Oh, I wish you could smell oh, the fresh lemon. Let me see if I have enough. I'm going to do another half of a lemon because this recipe calls for three tablespoons and then another teaspoon. So I want to be sure I have enough. Oh, there's my refrigerator buzzing, beeping because I didn't shut it all the way. Let me finish squeezing this. And of course, these are going to go into my handy trash bowl. Thank you, Rachel Ray, for that tip that I learned a long time ago. All right, so now I have my lemon juice and it calls for three tablespoons into the mayonnaise. So here's my tablespoon. I'm going to measure one, two, oh, this is going to be good, three. And we're going to save this because it calls for a teaspoon in the pasta salad later on. Now, additionally, it calls for the dressing, two tablespoons of honey. So let me get my tablespoon back. We are at the end of this honey jar. I think we're going to finish it off tonight. So just a, tip, just a tip, try and squeeze it like yeah. as hard as you can. You know what? It was by the window where it got cold. And if honey gets cold, it kind of goes slow. Have you ever heard the expression slower than molasses in January? Uh -huh. Molasses are, are like honey, and if they get cold, they get slow. All right, there's one tablespoon. I get that off with my spoon. I tried. And now, here comes another one. Oh, come on, honey. Come on, honey. Here it comes. You're too funny, dear. I'm glad you guys are patient. I should have warmed this up. I should have microwaved it. Okay, we've almost got another tablespoon. Come on. Mm. I never had honey in my tea. No, Dell. I like honey in my tea. That's why I have this is almost gone because I use a lot of honey. Uh, I please with you, Dell. Yeah. I please with you. Honey is good. Thank you, little bees. All right, there's another <laughs> tablespoon. I'm just going to scooch a little bit more out with my clean finger. I did wash my hands before we started. Don't worry. Because rule number one of working in the kitchen, before you yep. do anything, wash your hands. Absolutely. Let me rinse this spoon off. Because I'm going to need it for the garlic powder. The next ingredient in this dressing for my pasta salad is garlic powder, which I do have because I like garlic as well as I like lemon. So here we go. Here's my little container of garlic powder and it calls for a half a tablespoon. So I'm just gonna guess what a half of this would be. 
Mm. Feel like I'm in an Italian restaurant. Okay, that looks like about half. That's true, Dale. Garlic you know, bread. If, hey, Dale, yeah. you know if you go to Target, you can get a full set with a half a tablespoon included. Oh, of garlic powder? No, I have a tablespoon, the spoon. Oh, cool. I'll have to check that out. Now, it says salt and pepper to taste. I'm going to put in a little bit of salt and, and um, a lot of pepper because I don't think you can ever have too much pepper. And then if I don't have enough salt after it's all done, I can add some more salt later. But if you put too much salt in now, you can't take it out. So it's better to be careful with salt. We'll just start with about that much and ground pepper. This is going to be delicious. Uh, I always like salt butter. It's pepper. Now, then it says to whisk it all together and set aside. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I have a whisk here. Get rid of this. And we are just going to stir this together. Ooh, homemade dressing. Mmm, I can smell the lemon and the mayonnaise and the garlic. What a good combination. It all blended together. Nice and smooth and creamy and lemony. Delicious. Okay, and set it aside. Now, I have a pen and I'm just going to put a little check mark so I remember to do everything because the last time I cooked with you, oh, the first time I cooked with you, I forgot to get the chickpeas out of the refrigerator. And so if I check everything off, I'll remember to put everything in. So now it says we need to slice the celery, the red onion, and chop the parsley. So let me go ahead and do that. Oh, look at this bunch of fresh parsley and lemon. This is gonna be a yummy salad. Let me just wash it off with a cold shower. Wake up, get clean, wake up. So I'm gonna cut the stems off and into my trash bowl. And then I'm just gonna chop it up. Remember the trick about curling your fingers in when you cut so you don't accidentally cut your tips of your fingers. So that's what I'm doing. And this calls for, oh, only a quarter of a cup. My goodness. Well, you know what? I'm gonna do a little bit more than that because I don't think it can hurt and I think it's gonna add good flavor. So there's my parsley. If you want to follow the recipe as it's written, you only need a quarter of a cup. Now I'm going to cut, wash off three stalks of celery and chop up the celery. Need a nice little bite-sized pieces. Oh, I'm excited. I think this is going to be so yummy. Let me get a towel so I can dry this off celery off a little bit so it doesn't slip away from me when I'm cutting it. And that's something you should remember to do whenever you're cutting on a cutting board is to cut dry things so they don't slip away. That's another way to help you not get cut. So I'm going to cut off the little brown ends and then I'm just going to chop, chop it into little slices. Three of celery. That's going to add a nice crunch. And celery has a nice flavor. Celery is great for lots of things. Here we go. All righty. And as I cut things up, and I know I'm going to be adding them to my pasta, I'm just going to scoop them into a bowl with this handy tool like this. You can get, grab a lot off your cutting board that way. 
And that's going right in the bowl with the parsley because it's all going to get mixed together anyway. All right, now it's time to cry. I have to cut up my red onion. It's one red onion. I got to cut the whole thing up. Does anybody here ever wear sunglasses when you chop onion? That, that can help you. I'm so short. <laughs> but I'm not going to do sunglasses. I'm just going to be brave. So I cut both ends off. So let me show you a trick. When you cut onion, it still has the skin on. I cut both ends off. And then I'm going to cut it this way. And that will make it easier to peel the skin. Watch what I mean. Cutting it exactly in half. And now it makes it easy to grab this layer of skin and peel it off. And I like that this recipe calls for red onion because the more colorful a dish is, the tastier it seems and the prettier it looks. So now I'm just gonna cut my onion. No tears yet. This must not be a real strong one. Bill, have you tried the blooming onion at, um out back, my mom just cannot have onion, doesn't set with her. So she just oh. sits there and we eat it all, we all eat it in front of her and make her feel like she's just, uh, the, the, uh, the judge. It's like, she's like, uh, saying, I love you. that. I have had that, um, Meredith, and it is delicious, but it's fried. Anything that's fried is delicious, right? French fries, blooming onions, fried chicken, fried shrimp. Get my tool and scoop up the choppings. Now, this is a big red onion. I don't know if I'm going to use the whole thing or not. Let me just see how it looks. It's really more of a purple color, a red onion, and it adds such beautiful color to a dish. Mm. This is why I picked this recipe. It has everything I love in it. Green olives. Mm. So it says that they need to be chopped. So I have a half a cup of green olives. I got it. And I'm just going to slice these up. Oh, this is going to add such beautiful color. Oh, I just thought of something else that's going to need to be sliced. It calls for four hard boiled eggs on the top of it after the pasta is all mixed together with the dressing and the vegetables. And it says to cut the eggs in half, but I think I'm going to cut it, cut the eggs even a little bit smaller. Okay, there's the olives into there. Every time I make hard boiled eggs and I start to crack them and peel them, we have one dog left now, Bonnie. She knows what that sound means and she comes into the kitchen and she begs for a hard boiled egg until she gets one. Now these are already peeled, so she won't do that because she won't hear the noise, but she knows Crack, crack, crack means I'm going to get a hard boiled egg and she comes in the kitchen and begs. So I've cut this egg into four pieces. You can cut it in half or you can cut it in smaller pieces. It's your pasta salad. And I'm going to set that in a dish separate from the vegetables because these eggs are going to go on top of the finished pasta salad. One, two, three. And that gives me four pieces. Oh, there's one egg left for Bonnie. It's her lucky night. Do you want to see Bonnie eat an egg? I want to see it. Okay, let me let me yes. slice four, and then I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. Hello, dog. Thank you, but they eat eggs one better. <laughs> Bonnie, come here. Bonnie, you want an egg, Bonnie? Come here. Come here. Oh, she takes it and she oh, runs away my. and she eats it and she's wagging her little tail. It calls for a cup of frozen peas. I didn't have just frozen peas. I had peas and carrots, but oh well, then we we're going to have some pretty orange color in my pasta salad. So I've just a little bit cooked the peas and carrots that were frozen. So they're not hot anymore and they're ready to go in the salad. And I have my tuna here. Now the recipe calls for two eight ounce cans. And in case anybody's trying to follow the recipe, I wanna show you something. At the store, I couldn't find eight ounce cans. I could find other, other sizes, 
But this is a five ounce can, but it says if you drain the water out, which I did, you'll have four ounces. So four and four is eight. Four and four is eight. So I have four little cans and that meets the requirements for the amount of tuna for the recipe. So here's my tuna. And I think we're ready to get started mixing it together. Oh, and then I'm gonna taste it and let you know how it is. So I have my pasta here. Let's see what the directions say to do. Step three, stir tuna, celery, onions, peas, parsley, olives, and a teaspoon of lemon juice into the pasta. So tuna, in you go. all the vegetables. In you go. Oh, doesn't that look good? And let's see. I've got tuna, celery, onion, peas and parsley. Here's my peas with carrots. Oh my goodness. I think I'm going to need a bigger bowl. Because it says to add a teaspoon of lemon juice with this. So let me go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to transfer it to my bigger bowl to stir it. Teaspoon of lemon juice. I'm going to save this because I might want more. I, I love lemon juice. So this is going to go into this bigger bowl so I have room to stir it. And this is a lot of pasta. And um, it's just my husband and I living here and we will never eat all of this. So my plan is to put it into little um, like takeout containers like restaurants give you and donate it to the Lamb Center so the homeless friends can have a pasta salad for lunch tomorrow if they want. I was thinking the same thing. When in doubt, give it to the lamb center. Yeah. And it'll, I'll, I'll put it in little containers, like little disposable containers. Oh, this looks so good, friends. I wish you could, I wish you could smell it. This is what it looks like before we add the dressing. I'm going to stir it. I love pasta salad. This reminds me of a recipe I used to make at the beach all the time when we would go when our kids were little with other families. And it had tuna and it had frozen peas and pasta and mayonnaise in it. It was similar to this. It had a lot of other things in it too. And the name of the recipe was pig salad. And I think that's because it had so many different ingredients in it. When farmers feed the pigs, they just throw all the leftovers into the pig sty and the pigs say, thank you very much. And it was a good salad, very similar to this. Look at the colors. Oh my goodness. Now let me check my recipe and make sure I have everything in here. Pour dressing over salad, okay. You know what I'm gonna do first before I mix the dressing in? I'm just gonna give it a little taste. It needs more salt. I'm gonna do that now because it's easier to stir salt into the dressing than it is to stir it the whole salad. Now, it may seem like I'm doing a lot, but only a little bit comes out at a time, so don't worry. Give it a stir. Why not? A little more pepper. It's the spice of life. I'm going to give it in one more stir. And I'm going to pour in the dressing. I have a spatula here so I can get every last little drop. And if you have given up eating meat for Lent, this would be a really nice lunch or supper for you or your whole family. All right, I'm just gonna kind of toss it like a 
tossed salad to get it all mixed together. Oh, it looks so colorful. It's so delicious and yummy and lemony. I'm glad I did extra parsley too, because that adds a nice bright green color. Delicious. And then it says to put the hard boiled eggs on top. So let me do that now. And let me show you this easy tuna pasta salad. And you know, with dishes like this and lots of different things that you make, it's gonna be good now, but it's gonna be even better the next day. So let me show you what it looks like, and then I'm gonna taste it. Oh, friends, look at that. Let me put on this other light. Can you see it a little better? Oh, doesn't that look yummy? Let me taste it now. Plate and a serving spoon. I'm gonna get a little piece of egg, all of the ingredients. Pork. Oh, I wish you could smell it. I wish you could taste it. Oh, come to me, little olives. Come to me, parsley. Mmm. It is really good. Sweet Jesus, my Savior, you are my favorite.